I don't care about Bruce Wayne. I don't care about his money. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. That yeah. Stuff. It was Batman, his gadgets, his cars, and I mean, look at look at how we grew up. Who who else started putting twenty inch rims and crazy stuff on cars? Like Batman was black. Like, he was, <laughs> like <laughs> there's no way in the world that you can tell me that he was not. You know, that's funny. <laughs> I mean, These are some crazy times, got your vice, I got mine. Some people choose to smoke and drink, I choose to spit these rhymes. Just trying to make it through, Batman's got just won't do. Just need a hero to cut through all the noise that we have too. To the ladies and all the gentlemen, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, my friends. Steve Van Dan wildin' out, best podcast all around. Let's make some noise for the heroes of noise, everybody let's scream and shout. Hey, welcome to another episode, a bonus episode of Heroes of Noise. My name is Dan Ramirez, and with me, as always, is Mr. Steve Hudson. What's going on, Steve? I am feeling wonderful and very excited. I am excited today. We're not going to tell you exactly why. We will in like five seconds, but just hold up a second, because we are not alone. We normally, uh, as you guys know, we're normally just doing the whole Steve and Dan thing, but we have some guests with us. Uh, There's going to be some familiarity because our boy Johnny Bucks is with us. John, what's going on? Hello, chaps. Oh, I love it. I love <laughs> that, that voice. He's the, it's the voice of an angel, man. A very basic angel. But we have a guest of honor. That's the thing that I want to talk to you guys about today. Because let me tell you a quick little story of uh, a chance meeting that happened. I can't really get mm-hmm. into it too much, but I'm just going to say that at one point, a couple weeks ago, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to this guy. And we're both talking about uh, shoulder injuries, you know, and I guess this guy had to top me, of course, because I'm like, hey, man, how's your, you know, how's your, he's a one upper. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm like, hey, so, you know, your shoulder uh, pretty hurting, too. I, I Mine's pretty jacked up, too. He's like, well, hopefully you didn't do it like I did. Here's where that whole one up and comes in right here, guys. And he's talking about he says. He says, I go, so what happened? He goes, well, so I'm hanging from a boat. That's always a good starter for a conversation right there. I'm hanging yeah. from a yes. boat. And. I'll, I'll let him explain this if I'm not saying it correctly, but apparently what happened is a spear came down, ladies and gentlemen, and there's more to it, but it basically stabbed him in the shoulder. And here we are having this conversation right now. And I'm like, okay, wow, that's something you don't hear every day. So is this a situation? Like, are, are you a fisherman, man? Like, what, what, where'd this come from? He's like, oh, no. <laughs> and, and totally nonchalant. This is the best part. So, oh, no, no, I'm stumped, man. I'm like, what? Stumped, man. I said, okay, cool. That's awesome. Uh, anything I might know? Even more nonchalant. Uh, you know, you hear about Black, you hear Black Panther? Yeah. Land game. No big thing. No big thing. These little independent films <laughs> yeah. I've been working on. I'm like, what? So automatically. And of course, he was being super cool about it. I'm just kidding around. But I, that instantly piqued my interest, obviously. And I turned into fanboy, big time fanboy. So um, luckily enough, he was an absolute gentleman, a, a totally nice guy, and was able to share a few, couple of stories with me. And I thought, hey, why the hell not? We've had on writers. We've had on musicians. We've had on directors, actors producers but we've never had a stunt man on before so Listen. why not have that happen today so ladies and gentlemen heroes of noise is happy to introduce to you mr precious jenkins the stunt man what is going on precious hey guys how you doing oh man excited now yes. that you're here it's fantastic yes. that you're here you know there's all these questions that i know are going to come up man but i think i'm just going to start off with the most generic of them all because i really need to know how does somebody go and decide, you know, I think I'm just going to be a stunt man. Where does this come from? Um, it actually, I, I became a stunt man on accident. Hmm. Um, I've got a um, a good buddy. Uh, his name is Suyin Valdivia. Uh, we call him Sammy. I owe everything that I have to this guy. Um, I've done martial arts since I was six years old, gymnastics since I was nine. Oh, wow. And um, I was at uh, L.A. Valley College one day. Uh, we were training. And um, Sammy asked me, he says, hey, Precious, uh, are you working right now? And I was like, no, I'm not working. I just quit my job. Um, I was doing um, a PBS, like a pre-board screener uh, mm. before at uh, Burbank Airport. It's before mm-hmm. everybody went um, federal and, and all that stuff. So I was yeah. making like $4.95 an hour, uh-huh. you know, butt kiss for, for you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, no. So he says, okay, well, why don't you go and get a, get a headshot and resume and take it to this guy? And um, green, I was like, so what, what's a headshot? Mm-hmm. Like I literally <laughs> had never, 
I never knew stuntmen existed until yes. I became one. Literally, wow. the day that I became one, I realized the stuntmen existed. I literally thought that all of the actors, if I could do all of that stuff growing up in the, you know, as a kid, then why the heck couldn't they? Yeah. So it just seemed uh, like it's like natural to you, I guess, right? Mm, I mean, you've yeah, always it, had that skill. Yeah. I mean, it, you, you fight as a kid. I mean, my name is Precious. I got picked on. So I learned how to fight very well. Mm -hmm. um, and then gymnastics and stuff. So it was it was just, you know, easy for me. Um, and, and I just thought that everybody did that. But um, so I didn't know what a headshot was. So he says, well, go get an eight by 10 picture of your face and then take it over to this guy in, in Valencia and tell him I told you to come down. <laughs> so I go up to the stages that he told me to go to, uh, right up the hills from Magic Mountain. And uh, I find this little short Japanese guy named Michi. Mm -hmm. uh, really cool dude. Um, looks like he's been through hell and back, but mm -hmm. really cool dude. So um, I give him my headshot, and um, and he's like, okay, well, Sammy, you know, told you come. He says, okay. Uh, he takes me outside and... and uh, asked me about my martial arts background and stuff. So uh, he brings out another guy, uh, another stunt guy, and he says, um, well, you you follow. So they did like a 10 or 15 beat fight. You know, they put together like a 10 or 15 beat fight and said, okay, now your turn. And I'm like, I've never done this stuff before in my life. <laughs> so I don't know choreography. So I, <laughs> yeah. I, I did it. And uh, he was like, oh, okay, good, good. He says, all right, well, let's go inside. We get pads. I want to see gymnastics. And I said, uh, no, we can do it here. I, I started out as a street tumbler. And, you know, Japanese have a hard time with the R word. Mm -hmm. So Michi's go, he says, oh, really? So he <laughs> yeah. says, really? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Which was, it's always been funny to me. So yeah. uh, he asked me to show him. So I started tumbling in the parking lot on the concrete. And he's like, whoa, you know, really good. And he um, takes a couple seconds. He's like, hmm okay, you hired and walks away. And I'm like, all right, cool. But what, what am I hired for? <laughs> just yeah, like left exactly. around. <laughs> okay. And he's like, Oh, 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 like you, you, you power ranger now. So it was like, I was on the stages of the Beetleborgs and power rangers. Oh, wow. And that, oh. Was, that was my start in 1997. Oh. Literally how I became a stuntman on accident. So your first role as a stuntman was, was it both? Okay, I'm not going to front. I know Power Rangers, but Beetleborgs, I know, was like right there with it. So were you a Beetleborg and a Power Ranger or just a Power Ranger? or A uh, Beetleborg and a Power Ranger on this both guy. shows. Look at that. Just coming out swinging right off the bat. That's awesome, man. That's really cool. It, so it was fun. I imagine that uh, you've had your share of dings, obviously, with this. <laughs> you know? Uh, uh, one or two. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly, like... You know, you go into this and this is your first you're 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 now with uh, Beetleborgs and Power Rangers and you're just kind of like flying by the seat of your pants like this. Is it a, is it a pleasant experience? Do you feel like you you found a new home or is it like I like are you fish out of water? It was going from making like four hundred dollars every two weeks to at that time they were non-union. Uh, so I was making uh, seven hundred fifty dollars a week. That's okay. good. Yeah, so seven fifty a week from four twenty five every two weeks. I was a nice in mom. love. I was in heaven. Yeah. Um. So I mean, it, it was it was great. I mean, it was a great experience. Um, the guys that uh took me under their wing, like they they're some of the best guys that I still know to this day. And you didn't just do one episode. It shows here that you did like multiple episodes. Yeah, I think I did <laughs> on Beetleborgs. I think I did like. 39 or or something like that or because my my imdb doesn't have everything on it mm -hmm. um and on power rangers uh i was doing stuff from the turbo series to the um lost galaxy and then finally uh rescue was the last Christ. series that i did on with um power rangers I'm sure I saw your work at some point because my that my kid was all about Power Rangers back then. So, <laughs> I mean, I was in Toys R Us constantly getting some new Borg or whatever I forget what they're called, but the like all the swords and everything. And, yeah. And, mostly yeah, cool. mostly mostly on the Rangers, you guys would have seen um the Japanese stunt team Alpha Stunts, because okay. all of the costumes were 
originally uh, Power Rangers were from Japan. So all of the costumes and stuff like that fit the small Japanese guys. Um, when I first started out, I got the bucket of everything. I remember being in Valencia, uh, almost passing out because I was inside the monster costumes first. Ooh, and right. uh, there's an episode of Beetleborgs that was the worst one ever. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in a monster costume and I think it was it was a big lion so the costume was about 85 pounds worth of foam and and at that time in valencia was about 120 degrees so it was horrible it was horrible it was a great experience but it was horrible did you pass out or you almost passed out? luckily i did not i almost passed out now i've I've seen people actually pass out but yeah i didn't i didn't get that far so after, obviously after this, you're like, I think this, like, you know, this is a career, but was there, what was the first movie you did or show you did where you're like, you walked on set and said, wait a minute, this is big. Like, wait a minute. That would have been, um, Planet of the Apes, the one with Mark Wahlberg. Oh, oh the that, Tim Burton one. Yeah, that's a big production. That's that was, a big That production. was when, that was when I was like. This is going to be fun. This is going to be a lot of fun. That is so freaking. Now, what, who did you play? What did you play? Were you an ape or were you just. Yeah, yeah, I was an ape. Hey, you got to get in makeup. I got to get in makeup, got to get in costumes, got to get on travelers. Um, I got to learn from a gentleman by the name of Terry Notary. Okay. If you don't know who he is, look, look him up. He is a movement specialist. He is an, a primate specialist. Yeah. So he taught us the proper way to get down on all fours and move like apes. I mean, we were all ass and across the place. This Jeez. guy, he's, he's good. He's great. And how, how many, uh, was this, was this a long shoot, a tiring? I imagine you weren't in like 120 degree weather like you were before. You're like, oh, this is how you're supposed to be treated. When we were in Trona, uh, when we were in Trona, California, it was about 30 degrees in the morning and about a buck twenty in the afternoon. Oh my god! Oof. Wait a, wait yeah. a minute. <laughs> so as I recall, just as I'm bad. trying to remember the makeup situation on on Planet of the Apes. So because you did have like a full ape suit, as I recall, right? It wasn't yeah. just all. It was mostly practical Oof. effects, as I recall. Full full ape suit. Um, I didn't have the prosthetics because I wasn't um one of the featured apes. Uh-huh. So I had a uh, full ape suit, uh, black around my eyes, black around my mouth. And then uh, an ape head that went on. Now, when you do this, you know, you, you take a major step up and you're like, wow, I've now see where my career is going. And I'm in a Tim Burton, for, you know, a freaking Tim Burton movie. Crazy. Yeah, that is insane in itself. But like as the stunt man, I always wondered that. Do you have close contact with like, for instance, with like Mark Wahlberg? Did you get to meet Mark Wahlberg or is it something where you're like, you know, they you, they go off, they go back to the trailer and then you come in and do the background stuff? Um. Now in my career, I'm able to be comfortable enough to be around anybody and everybody. At the beginning of my career, it was, um, I was still learning. So we, we have a thing where it's, it's uh, shut up, look, listen, and learn. Mm-hmm. And you literally try not to get starstruck because it, it's not professional. Sure. Yes. Um, you look at everything that's going on, you listen to everything that's being said, and you learn as much as you can. I imagine you were, I mean, I guess in the beginning of the career, the goal is to be seen for stunts, but unseen in yes. other, okay. But then later yes. on, you start being like, no, no, no. I'm also a professional here, so we could talk, we can have a conversation. I'm a professional more, too. Yeah. Yeah, the more I did things and the more people got to know me and people got comfortable with me, the more, um, I was given free reign to not only mingle with the actors and actresses, but also to train with them and, you know, just everything. Second part to my question on there. And I I asked that for a reason because I'm looking on your filmography right now and it jumps, you can either jump to stunts or you can jump to actor. So when did the acting kick in and did that have everything to do with like your comfort zone, your comfort level rather, you know, Um, increasing to where you're able to feel like you're not starstruck anymore. The acting kicked in. Um, on, I think it was Expendables. 
Oh, snap. That's I just played. another. See that? Little, I'm sorry, real quick, but I love the. It's just so, like, it's just little expandables. No big deal. <laughs> it's expandables, <laughs> it's, it's, man. That's crazy insane. to me. I'm sorry. It I didn't mean to interrupt crazy. you, but I, I would have to tell you, uh, Precious, when I first met you and after or just our little conversation and you showed me a certain picture, I guess I got a little starstruck, man. So hearing you tell these stories is very entertaining to me. I, I appreciate it, brother. I mean, like I said, I'm just a regular person. Sure. Um, I got a job just like you got a job. My job takes me here and there. Your jobs take you in different places. But it's, you know, in my book, we're all no, I, I don't look at even the stars nowadays. I don't look at them as being stars. It's sure. We're all on the same job. I mean, definitely they get paid way more money than I get paid, but uh, we're all here. We're all doing the same things and all of that stuff. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm sorry. My wife is handing me um, some pictures. <laughs> Why yeah, she, she's me? like, if you're going to do an interview now, yeah, she's like, let's do on the, now. you know what I'm saying? PR? <laughs> she's like, you are messing well, no. up the answer, the questions now. She gave me, she gave me a picture of a collage that she made of, of a lot. If you guys can see this. Oh uh, yeah. Wow. Let's see what we got here. That, that is awesome. so cool. Some of the shows that I've done and, and the people that I've worked with and stuff. And, oh, and my, is for, that Shaq? Yeah. <laughs> Make it, like, make it Shaq making me look like I'm like two inches tall, man. That guy, dude is he, humongous. Yeah, he's man. huge. But <laughs> yeah, thank that you, is Jenkins. Wonderful. I'm, I'm glad she did. Thank that. you, Miss Jenkins. Uh-huh. But uh, <laughs> uh <Boy. laughs> that's the one right there. That's the one, man. But um, as awesome. I said, like. On on Expendables, I was I don't even really consider that acting because I was just getting choked out by Dolph Lundgren. I was uh, yeah. if you if you go back and watch the show, you'll see a part where in the beginning when they in directly in the beginning you'll see them um, fighting the Somali pirates, mm-hmm. and I was a Somali pirate, and it was supposed to have only been a week a week's worth of work inside of New Orleans, and we were there about two months. So it was my first time really being able to enjoy New Orleans was on that show. Oh wow. But um it's it says um acting, it says Gunner's Pirate. And literally it was just me being up on top of the boat while everybody else was inside the the basin of the boat Mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was they they asked, well, you know, what are you doing? And he's like, oh I'm about to hang a pirate. So I literally got to just lay there and play dead while he, you know, tied this knot and this rope around my neck. Oh, geez. Now, the problem with that was um, we have uh, the rope that they used um, in the the nautical rope, the real thick, um, like, wet burlap type of webbing rope. Uh Okay, when you cinch that, it doesn't uncinch very easily. Ooh. So, oh no 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 yeah so uh <laughs> Dolph literally he would cinch it on my neck and I couldn't because I was supposed to be knocked out or dead so I couldn't you know <clears throat> choke or anything and he they you know he would do that and everything would be fine and they'd say okay cut and Dolph would just turn around and walk away if he dies he dies <laughs> if he dies he dies <laughs> <laughs> he literally he literally turned around and walked away and it like I kept reaching for it and I couldn't get it off and uh, our um, assistant stunt coordinator Noon Orsadi was on one end of the boat the opposite end and he saw me and I've never seen anybody sprint so damn fast that's awesome he sprinted over and he he released and I just the gasp of, of fresh air and I was like <laughs> Oh, that it beautiful was fresh air. Yes. And then it's like, damn, we've got to do this two or three more times. <laughs> and each time it went like that, that's how each it went. Time, each time oh. he sent it. And then like it, he wasn't doing it on purpose. Yes. He was just in his element of acting and he was just like, okay, and cut. And he just walk off. And I'm just like, dude, I'm dying here. <laughs> yeah. I know he was I'm like, dying. I don't even like doing this anyway. But I am dying. I am dying. So get this so, off as soon as you can. So I think that's my first credit as acting as Gunner's Pirate because I oh, like cool. was just being killed. 
And I've done a couple other things. My wife wants me to do acting more, and I'm like, I don't like it. Oh, I like to stay okay. behind the camera. Okay. You know? But, you know, she's she's pushing for me to do more in front of it. Well, that's what's going to happen then. If she's pushing for it, you already lost this battle, bro. This is a natural progression. You're, you're, you're over well, with it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I'm not going to go down without a fight. I feel, I mean, but if you look at, like, your list of things you've been involved with, I mean, we're talking, like you said, Planet of the Ape, The Shield, which was my show. That my was a good show to be on. Oh, that was the show for so very long. I didn't know you did The Shield. You did Semi-Pro with my yeah. boy Andre Benjamin, a.k.a. Yeah. Andre 3000. Yeah, like I, was you... <laughs> his, I was his stunt double on that. Black Dynamite with uh-huh. yet a... Your yeah, boy, you know, fight, <laughs> <Michael Jackson. laughs> yeah. that dude is for real. That dude be trying to do that martial arts for real. Yeah, and- he, he doesn't hold back. He's, he's, he's a great guy. He does, he does not hold back. And he's like, professional too, right? He's like, he's not, yeah, yeah he's, he's the real deal. Right? No, he, yeah, he's, he's definitely the real deal. Um, and, and he's just like, you know, he, he loved to make fun of my name. You know, <laughs> other than that, it's, it's Michael Jai White. What are you going to do? He, he's making I mean, fun of your name being precious. So what are you going to do? That's what it's going to be then. Yeah, it's going yeah. to, because <laughs> he, he looks like he can handle himself okay. You know? Yeah, he, he's, he, I think he can defend himself a little bit. <laughs> This guy's like, but, I'm getting capped on by Spawn right now, and there's really nothing I can do about it. <laughs> I mean, they, hey, you know what, though? If you're going to get like made fun of by somebody, that's a pretty cool person to be made fun of. You right? know? Be, yeah, made fun of yeah. by, I should say. Well, yeah. I mean, if someone was like, aha, you made fun of, I'm like, oh, you mean that time I was on the movie set with Michael J. Thank White? Thank you. Flip it around. Exactly. Go back to your job, bro. <laughs> You know, that I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to the movie set, and we will have a conversation later. Yo, but one look at it that way, but I look at it this <laughs> other way where I made a bunch of money and got on on the screen. And speaking about a bunch of money, that uh-huh. leads you to Avatar. Yeah, well, Come that's on. the thing. No, that's the thing. Um, as I said, I do not update my IMDb. Okay, now, um. Avatar, I did not work on. Oh, it's on my avatar, but if you, it's on my IMDb. But if you look at it, if you click on it, you'll go down okay. and you'll see that there is a comment from me that says, um, "In no way, shape, form, or fashion am I trying to take anything away from the men and women that worked on this show. It is a great show. However, I did not work on this show." It's on my IMDb, not at my fault, hmm. you know. So oh, someone just put that on on. Before. Yeah, it, you got it's, Wikipedia it's right on there. there. Yeah. It's it's on there, but I mean, I wish. I'll tell you this: uh, the coordinator for the show, I know him very well, and I've tried my best to get on Avatar two and three. It didn't happen. I well, mean, isn't there gonna be I like, would have loved to. Is there like four, that. five, six, seven, eight, nine, two? You still have some time, I think. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know what's gonna happen on two or three. Like they filmed two and three back to back. So yeah. the guys were gone for like almost four years. The people that worked on it just like just disappeared for like four years. I mean, but even let's just say Avatar is out of the question, which it is. You uh-huh. still got Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes. And Transformers. Yes. Game over, bro. <laughs> like, what are we talking about? <laughs> Skip Avatar. We're going and Tron Legacy. Yeah. Yes. What else we got here? I'm very curious what you did in Get Him to the Greek. Um, <laughs> that's a great question. I just skipped over that. You know what? That's a good question. Um, I played. I played again a um, not a Somalian, but an African character. Mm-hmm. Um, if you look at the movie, you'll see um, the video that. Uh, is made inside the movie called African Child. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so if you look at African Child, you'll see, uh, (laughs) as as the main characters are walking, you'll see explosions in the background and guys just, like, flying back and forth. Yeah. Yeah, I was on the Air Ram, so which is a a pneumatic catapult that you step on. Oh, my God. Oh, that's awesome. And it just just throws you. Oh, my gosh. Um, when my cue was hit, I would step on this air ram and just be catapulted through the air in the background. And it was just, that was just some of the fun stuff that I had shooting the guns, um, 
like the whole war scene of that that um, section of that movie. That's what I was in. I have to reach I mean, out. I completely forgot about that part. Man. You've been in, <laughs> you've been in all the biggest, like legitimately been in like all the big, like the the things straight out of Compton and Birth of a Nation were like two mm-hmm. massively talked about movies, and of course yes. you show up in both. Yeah, I, actually, I also had um, as, as my wife is is shaking her head. <laughs> <laughs> so straight out of Compton, um, I did. Um, I doubled Easy E on Straight Out of Compton, so I was Easy E stunt double. But also, there's a section in Straight Out of Compton where the uh, where Ice Cube them are coming down the escalator, mm-hmm. and um, the, there's a little small little peanut head guy that you know comes around the escalator, and he's <laughs> like. There you go, right there. What that ruthless like? So I actually I had an acting. Part hey, time. hey! Um, he's like, what are my? What's my motivation? You I, had to I remember think some I got lines. it by default. I got it by default because the the guy that was supposed to do it, uh, that looked like just a beast. Like if he looked at you the wrong way, you would crumble. And at the time, he was um, world champion at with the UFC. Oh, jokes. Uh, his name is Eves Edwards. Mm-hmm. Uh. Eves has a bit of a Caribbean uh, European accent, mm-hmm. so it he didn't sound right okay. talking like that. Okay, so I ended up getting that by default, which was great for me. Hey, that's, yeah, that's wonderful. That uh-huh. is free- now, how was Birth of a Nation? Was that because si- it seemed like a big set, like a set that was like legit? You know, it it. What do you mean, like legit? As like it what? seemed like you were. You know how some places are like, oh, that's a green screen. They're not actually no. out in the elements. This seemed um, like you were out in the elements, no? We were on every single plantation oh, Lord. in South Georgia huh. on Birth of a Nation. So huh. we were literally on every plantation. Uh, we were on the plantation that was where most people came into before they were dispersed throughout the... Um, oh my gosh south, and we were actually on the original cobblestones of wall street um which is downtown uh savannah georgia uh the um the river district and um it's the original cobblestones that they brought everybody in where they sold people sold cattle sold oh. everything so oh it was God. legit it was legit. It was it was a lot of research done on that to make it as authentic as possible. How did you feel being there? I mean, it's a uh, job. <laughs> I know it. Like it, it would kind of be like, "Whoo, this is whoo." There's. It is a job. Um, it was the only show that I've ever told my boss I'm not going to do something. And at that particular point in time, I didn't care about getting fired. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to do this. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I was like, I don't, I don't care. I'm not doing that. So there, there were, there were a few things that I said that I was not going to do. I mean, it was, it was a, it was a, a show that needed to be worked on, and because it told a truth, mm-hmm. but it was a hard show to work on. Oh man! I mean, it seemed like I mean. I didn't, you know, other than, you know, the fallout or whatever. Mm-hmm. And you're like, man, this seems creepily like you could tell this is just. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like even now that you're telling me where you were, I, I yeah. man, I, I don't know. You just, you, I imagine you're just feeling that weight. Around yes, you, man. As you're it, taking it, it, in. <laughs> it was a weight. Um, there were with everything that, that you do, there's going to be some level of of pressure. <laughs> but. There, there, were, there were eerie spots in different places that we would walk to. Um, it, it, it was summertime oh. in in Georgia, and it was very warm and uh, humid. Mm-hmm. But certain areas that you would walk through on the grounds of the plantation, especially the rice plantation, um, the air was cold, freezing aye, cold. Aye, aye. So it, it was, it was very, it was very weird. So on top of walking somewhere and you're literally sweating and you stand inside of a certain area and it's freezing cold on top of that, 
um, we had a uh, the director um, went over the loudspeaker and gave us uh, a um, uh, I, I don't want to say warning, but a um, well, it, it is what it is. You say gave us a warning. Um, he told us that those boys are here and uh, do not oh, walk boy. anywhere on set that is not lit up. When when he says boys, he means what I'm yeah. thinking. Yeah, that's immediately where yeah. my brain would go. I'd be like, you ain't got to say no more. Yeah, <laughs> I am, so it was, it, it, was a, it was a real quick PSA. He was like, uh, you guys, you know, them boys is here. So make sure y'all don't go anywhere that's not, you know, lit up by set lights. And we didn't. It just shows you built. That's why you know martial arts because your boy would have got his plane ticket and been like, "Oh, <laughs> this is where my part ends." I guess, huh? It was fun <laughs> while it lasted. It was show fun while it lasted. <laughs> but I got the dip, <laughs> man. But you were like, "Oh no, I ain't tripping." Yeah. I mean, oh no, I, I wasn't tripping. Not because of the martial arts, but you know, I mean, they, they, there's it was we even though we had you know those boys that were there. We had some of our boys that were ah, there. Ah, uh, there we go. And there were, we had some of the honoriest, <laughs> you know, <laughs> country, some of the honoriest country bumpkins that was like, you know, let them come over here and mess with you and, and we got something for them. Oh, that's and what you need. Like, yeah. 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 You're like... so the, <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 the it's the the same extreme just on the opposite you know it, it, and it was it was great you know i'm in i'm Big in bubba j is like yeah they're not gonna come over here and i'm like oh. <laughs> hey i believe you be like yeah. people be like bubba j got his axe i'm like the fact that you can say that <laughs> we're all good because <laughs> apparently that's his axe we are straight <laughs> Yeah, Bubba J had, had <laughs> Bubba J had a shotgun. Bubba oh, J had, Bubba J had anything in the world. Like <laughs> shout out to oh, Bubba J. With shout them. out to Bubba J. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Wow. Hey, I wanted to ask you real quick. So you, you've mentioned uh -huh. martial arts a few times. Um, sorry to step away from what we were talking about, but what yeah. have you been trained in formerly? Um. Well, I've trained in um, Taekwondo, um, Aikido. I've played around with Gojiru, Ninjutsu, Tai Chi, various different things like that. Um, but I found, uh, I first started training uh, Taekwondo years ago with uh, Bokwanjin and Billy Blanks. And then I left and went to uh, Kwanjin uh Jin Ki Lim, where I became a master in uh, Taekwondo uh, about five years ago. Oh, wow. oh, congratulations. That's awesome. Thank when you. you. When you say Billy Blanks. Is it the Billy Blanks? <laughs> I was just making sure. I'm like, wait a minute. That's really, I didn't know he really knew how to, uh, I thought it was just a workout. I didn't know he legit knew. No. Well, look at this brother. Yeah. Look Billy, Billy. Is, yeah. W when they say Billy badass, that, that's re in reference to him. That is really cool, man. I'm glad he's doing well. That is really cool. Yeah. Well, congratulations on your uh, master because that that takes like legit discipline. You can't be like, yeah. oh, I took some time off for like five years and then can't. No, uh, oh, no, no, no. I you have to stay. Took about 10, 15 years off and then came back and, and really, really put in work. Uh, yeah. My first I failed my first exam oh. and then had to retest a year later, which is OK. Okay, but I know you were bummed out when you failed the first one, right? Ah, uh, it it actually was a relief, huh? Because uh, I was nervous. I was so nervous, and I thought it was going to be a lot harder than what it was. Mm -hmm. But um, I I literally failed because I wasn't doing certain forms the right way. Okay, because I was I was too much into my head, just mm -hmm. really in your head, yeah, yeah. And then it was just like, yeah, just next year. I was like, okay, cool. So I mean, I got it down. Now he's now is there is there a local place that you practice now? Uh right now no, but um my grandmaster has opened up since COVID's over. He opened up two studios. One is inside of um Glendale and uh -huh. one inside of Pasadena. Uh oh, nice. JK Tyrell. That is that is amazing. That is really dope. So uh I know do you have any questions before we get into Dan? Do you have any questions before we get into the, the main event coming up? Yeah, because you know we got some uh, we our listeners and friends, and we do uh -huh. consider them both of those things. 
uh, are very interested in this little thing called the MCU, as you probably guessed when we first spoke. So uh-huh. yeah, I think we're going to get there, but <laughs> I'm looking at this. I'm still looking at your, at your, uh, your work here, your filmography. And it looks like around, uh, you said you had taken a break, but when was that? That was like between, uh, 20. No, I took a break. In break? I was trying to find. No, I took a break from martial arts. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. But, oh, yeah. but you yes. were still working. You were still doing yes. your stuff. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. I, I apologize. I misunderstood what you're saying. And I'm like, I don't see a break. And this guy is really, really busy. <laughs> so like really, really busy. So, okay. Professor Jenkins, the stuntman and martial artist is just going about his merry way and somehow finds himself stumbling into around 2016. I believe it was going to be, uh, was it civil war? Was that your first MCU perfor- uh, performance? Captain America civil war. Yeah. All right. Paint the picture, man. How did this happen? Um, California is California, and uh-huh. uh, it, costs, it costs a lot. So it's cheaper to move uh, to film inside of different places. Um, all the movies left California, and I was like sitting here like, hey, I mean, I could make more money doing features than I can doing the TV shows that I was doing. Mm -hmm. So I moved to Georgia and it just so happens that the guys doing civil war and most of the stuff for the MCU are the guys that I trained with here in Los Angeles at a gym called 8711. And, um, I walked on set one day and, and talked to, uh, the director, Sam Hargrave, which is a great stunt man. He's a, I mean, when I say great stunt guy, he's a great stunt guy. Okay. And uh, told him, hey, I just moved out here to Georgia. Uh, you got any work for me? Then I'd appreciate it. And um, literally about two days later, my phone rang and and I'm on Civil War with him. What? And it was great. That's just, okay. So <laughs> That's an amazing it's, story. It's, 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 it's <laughs> yeah, literally, man. it's who you know. <laughs> I believe that. I believe that. Wow. But I'm also picturing like, okay, first I guess I have to ask you and I... And I I understand what I'm asking and understand your position, but I I'm curious, are you an, a Marvel fan? Are you an MCU fan? Do you enjoy the stories and the, I are you a comic become, reader? Um, honestly, I didn't become a Marvel fan until I started working for Marvel. Okay. Because I had to do the research to figure out what was going on. Right. So that leads me to the question of, so you're being that you weren't like a Marvel, Marvel fan. Mm hmm. And you've already, you know, you've already established that you're really not starstruck by anything anymore. You know, you're, you, you're, you're a businessman. You're doing what you do. Mm-hmm. I guess you didn't really, because I, I would lose, pardon my language, I would lose my shit. If I, someone asked me to go to, <laughs> to, to do something with the MCU, it's over, man. I'm going to lose it. So I guess you didn't really have that. Then it's more of just a job. And, and, and were you really kind of aware of what you were getting into and how big this actually was? Actually, yeah, I was. Um, but again, like dealing with people that you work with and people that you know all the time. Yeah. It, it's just like, I'm going to hang out with some of my buddies. Yeah, that familiarity. You know, I'm, I'm working with my friends and stuff like that. So, yeah. I mean, it is what it is. We, we have certain things compartmentalized to where uh, when you're in this group, you're just doing, you know, things from here to here to here to here. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the actors, uh, they tend to stick with their doubles their stunt doubles uh, do training with them and everything mm-hmm. like that. And then when it's time to do major choreography, we'll do the choreography with our stunt guys. And like the stunt double will be there and that's who we're mainly fighting. But then there are some times that you have to remove the stunt double out and put the actual actor or actress right there. Mm-hmm. And you just continue on. Uh, just know that, with a stunt guy, you can hit a stunt guy. You can get hit by a stunt guy. Um, with an actor, you cannot hit an actor, but you're definitely going to get hit by the actor. Mm. Oh, <laughs> yeah! I did not know that. Blast, <laughs> man! Blast! <you. laughs> yeah, he oh, almost got uh, choked out by freaking Dolph Lundgren. Oh so. no, that's why Michael J. White was <laughs> Michael J. White was like hitting you for real. Michael J. White was like yeah. hitting you. Oh yeah. my god! But see, if if you hit Mike. I don't think he would mind because he's a physical type of guy, but he just doesn't pull punches. He, he won't like, and he's, he's a guy that you can literally talk to the same way that we're talking. Yeah. You can literally shoot the shit with Michael Jai White. And That's he's dope. just, he's just that cool. That is really cool. And he's it, literally that cool. 
And so I didn't know that you, uh, stunt doubles tend to just hang with their with their actor, kind of like, hey, we're kind of chilling together. Some of them do. Some okay. of them don't. But okay. on set, you're supposed to be right there with your actor. Okay. You know, you're you shouldn't be any further than, you know, a look or a, hey, I need you over here. Oh, cool. You know, okay, like cool. that's that's where you should be at all times. Uh, they'll ask your actor to do certain things. You need to be right there and be, you know, Johnny on the spot with certain pads, mm-hmm. uh, knee pads, elbow pads, hip pads, things like that. Okay. So that's part of your job as a stunt double for your actor. That is so, and, and I imagine on one set, can you be the stunt double for two different actors? Or normally it's going to be, you're the stunt double for this one. That's it. Or can you be like, no, you're multiple stunt doubles. You can. You okay. can be the double for two actors. It gets a little bit cattywampus yeah. if both actors are doing action in the same scene. Ah, oh, that's actually a great point. I didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah that makes total sense. Now, mm-hmm. looking on the credits here uh, for Civil War, who were you stunt double for? I wasn't. I was just a regular stunt guy. You were just a stunt guy. Okay. Not yeah, just stunt just guy, re- but okay. Yeah, right. just I'm a just- regular stunt guy. And did you get to meet any of the, did you, let me ask you, man, did you meet, have you ever met Chadwick? Yeah. Oh. I've got a, uh, I've got a helmet that we used inside of um, my wife's smiling about to go get. Here we go. Here we go, Jenkins. Thank you. So I, have, I have a. You got to get her in here. Scoot over, man. Let's get her in. <laughs> I, I, I know I need to be like, Miss Jenkins, you got to need a picture. <laughs> <laughs> like. My 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 wife is my biggest supporter. That's she amazing. Is, That's so dumb. and is, so important too. Oh, yes, she, oh here it comes. There we go. My biggest supporter. So this helmet, um, Chadwick actually wore in uh, rehearsal, and uh, wow. it's just it's a a very cheap rubber Chinese Black Panther helmet, but. In the time of having it, let me turn this over. I got oh, there it Chad- is. Oh, I got to see it up close. This um, is this oh. one here is this is Killmonger's. The first one is Killmonger's signature. This is a Koye signature. Goodness. Uh, um, I've got Io's signature over here, and then we've got Chadwick Boseman's signature. Oh, here. wait Come a minute! On, man. Wait a minute! That's amazing right there. That, that is, is amazing. So I've got I've got <laughs> most of the cast and then um when it, that was from Panther 1. Thank you, honey. That was from Panther 1. Um mm-hmm. I ended up leaving it at home when we did Panther 2, so I didn't get the rest of the guys to sign it for me. But I mean, after having Chad sign it and stuff like that, I I really don't need the whole cast. No, you yeah, do not. I mean, you've got you, the you've got the one. You got the essential. Yeah. You got yeah. an Okoye. Nice. Game over. Yeah. That's the one. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, she's the one. And that Denai, is so Denai is so cool. Like she um she's down to earth, real easy to talk to. Mm-hmm. Um and she's like, she'll joke around with you. She sits and you know, in between scenes, she'll sit and talk and all that oh, stuff. Wow. Like everybody, everybody from uh Black Panther, it was more as I said, it, it's it's fun when you're at work with your friends. Yes. Yeah. Um, it became more like family being That's on beautiful. Panther. That is beautiful. It man. was it was really cool working on that show. Because I know uh, part of it was shot on Perry's Tyler Perry's lot, right? Yeah, part two we did. Oh. Uh, we That's did beautiful. some stuff uh, at Tyler Perry Studios. We did some water stuff at Tyler Perry Studios. Um, we did some stuff at a, at a studio called OFS, mm-hmm. um, which is in Atlanta. Um, the first Panther we shot at um, Pinewood, which is now called um, Trillith. But uh, they had Guardians and Guardians 2 and th- or Guardians 3 and 4 or something like that and some other stuff at, at Trillith. So we had Tyler Perry and OFS. That is so. And now, is out of curiosity, is there ever a time where like you guys get so close to stunt, st- like you know, I, I imagine there's a camaraderie. Do you ever show up to set and be like, "Hey, yo!" Like you see your other stunt friend, like, "Hey, you're doing stunts on here too. What's up?" All the time, all the time. <laughs> especially, so cool. especially in in the black community, because yes, 
there's not a lot of us. Mm -hmm. So you'll work with someone like uh, one of the shows that I was working on. um, I was working with a guy that I hadn't seen in maybe four or five years. Oh, wow. We've stayed in touch via social media Mm -hmm. every now and then messaging here, but that's still not the same as, you know, seeing your buddy right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's always, that's a given. That's always going to happen. That is so, I can imagine texting and be like, Hey bro, are you going to be on this, on this set? Like, yeah, I'm like, Oh, I can't see see your name. I see your name on the call (laughs) sheet. You know, here comes the debauchery. Oh yes. Yeah. All all hell breaks. Oh, that sounds so fun. Cause you don't have to like, I mean, you could just, you, since you know, we like, hey, we're, we know what we each go through as mm-hmm. stunt performers. You guys could just bull crap together. Oh, yeah. oh, it sounds amazing. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the best of both worlds. Absolutely. You know, not, not only being in the film industry, but being in the film industry with, you know, good guys that you like, that you literally hang out with or, you know, just whatever. It, that's the best of both worlds. And oh, you were going to say something, Dan? Actually, do you mind if I apologize to like break up the convo, but I just noticed something on your side here. Do you mind if I take a quick like two minute pause? And I ah, just want to yeah, make sure I'm we're looking good. at I'm looking at your at the screen and I see the red dot on all three of yours. Exactly. I don't so, see a dot on mine. So I think what I want to do for just a second, if you don't mind, and I really do apologize, but I just, just want to make sure everything's copacetic real quick. Can you give sure. me that? So the question is, when you guys get ready to air this, did it really happen? Did it really yeah. happen? You know, or are we talking like, to ourselves? Like, are you talking to yourselves or am I really there? <laughs> <laughs> like it would be it would be so kick ass if you guys literally air this and I'm not here. Oh, that would be so funny. <laughs> it would be so it's like, wait a minute, what are these guys tripping on? Because they're they're listening to nothing and busting up laughing. Busting up. I'd be uh, like, call I'd be like, call Precious. I swear I talked to him. Call him. He knows. Our, me. La- our last uh our last episode on Patreon, we did mention something about psychedelics. So it would make sense at this point, I think. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um yeah, you know what? Really quickly here, I just want to check it out. And if we if I bump anybody out, I apologize, but this is to be safe okay so copy that copy give me that. just a second go for it are you in uh if, are you do you stay in la right now precious yeah i'm at, at my house in la what brought you to fresno uh, the woman that keeps giving me things in the background <laughs> <laughs> i should why did i even ask that question i was like there's uh-huh. only one thing that brings people to fresno it's well, but it, was, it was it was also the fact that when the when the pandemic hit and everything shut down I just wasn't sure of what to do. Um, the pandemic hit and everybody was literally scared shitless. Uh-huh. Didn't know what was going on. Uh-huh. I I have pictures of myself in full hazmat, you know. Oh super- my gosh. Shit you not. What? I have like because I uh, my house is inside of Atlanta. One of my good buddies was working on a show at um uh, Trillith Studios, and he just hopped on a plane and went home. And he's like, "Yo, can you please go get my rental car and take it back for me?" The day that I picked up his rental car, I was in full hazmat. Like the other stunt guy, it, it was at one of the stunt guys' house, the other stunt guy's house. And he literally, he was like, "Yeah, we talked on the phone." He says, "Hey, the car's right there. The keys are inside the the gas tank." Like he didn't come outside. He didn't, you know, say, "Hey, what's Yo. up?" You know, "How you doing?" Yeah, it was. It was like everybody was patient zero during that time. So I, well, I was like, dude, I don't even care. Like, peace out, you know, peace on you. I'm, I've got, you know, and I'll, I'll, Dan, I'll send you a picture later on of me in my hazmat. Yeah, like, yes, pull, please do, please do. Hold uh, on, I was hmm. like, if that's if you crazy. Look at, yeah, if you look at the movie Outbreak and all that stuff, <laughs> the the hazmat response team, I had full on hazmat. Oh I my gosh! Took the car and I took it to the the rental car place in full hazmat gear. I caught an Uber from the rental car place back to my buddy's house to pick, you know, to get in my car and go home in hazmat gear. So when you have to go to set, you got to go all the way to Fresno Airport. Then pro- they'll probably kick you to L.A. And mind you, that that. Oh, never mind. I, you probably get uh-uh. the private. No, what do you do? I drive. You don't get the jet. 
Well, no, you, well, then again, I, I like drive. the drive to LA. I do like the drive no, to LA. No, no, I drive to Georgia. If you don't, all right, I'm done. We're <laughs> we're we're finished. No, 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 no. Look, hear me out. Hear me <laughs> out. Okay, 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 dude. Uh, because I'm still a local resident of the state of Georgia, I don't get flown in to the shows that I work on. However, plane tickets right now, because of whatever reason, uh, plane it's true. It's so true. expensive. You're right. So it's literally cheaper for me to drive. That way I have, I always have my canine with me. Um, I always have my, my protection with me. And then I have my own vehicle. So nice. when, I, when I have flown into Georgia um, and, you know, production won't do a rental car. So you pay for your own rental car. So the rental car, like one day I was inside of Georgia and I was supposed to be there for a week and it turned out to like be almost two months. And the rental loan was like over two thousand dollars. Oh my goodness! Wait, my wife is saying more. Yes, yeah, she she gets all the receipts and she she does. Oh all the my so lord! My wife is saying more. So yeah, it it, it was more. But goodness I mean, literally, it, it just try yourself. Go to Hertz or anybody and say you need to to reserve a car from the Atlanta airport from this day to this day. Just try and reserve it for a week. It there's nothing there. You're not gonna you, get it. You had one for a month, uh, over a month, almost two months. That but, is unbelievably um, long. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and yeah. they foot that bill though, right? Uh, for the rental cars, no. That's that's on us. You paid two thousand dollars for a rental car. Damn near. So I was like, yeah, I'll just take my own car. I mean, I get it because you can leave when you want to leave. I get the, I love that thing. I'm comfortable inside of my own car. Yeah. I have everything that I need inside of my own car. That is nice. That um, is nice. And then, like, when I do go, like, I take my wife and son with me so we get to do a road trip. Oh, see, you, you didn't know? say that. Okay. Yeah. You take the family. Well, then, yeah, I'm driving. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. 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 That's a nice drive. You get to talk. Well, he's, he's a, he's, he's a 19 month old. Oh, oh, come on. That's adorable. I um, got it. Okay, back to this car. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I because now I'm getting the business end of being on a movie set. I thought, hey, this if is, you're... This oh, is, my everything. goodness. There's the real star right there. There she is. Look at him. And he's... he's saying, What's his name? Cairo. Kyra, that's a good name. Say hi. Hi, buddy. Hi, Cairo. Hi, buddy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that smile, man. Amazing. Oh, my goodness. You make some beautiful children. Thank you very much. Oh, my goodness. That's all, that's all the misses. Oh, yeah. She, I'm tripping. <laughs> Sorry, Miss Jenkins. It's all you. <laughs> Yeah, we shouldn't offend Ms. Jenkins like that. That's no, no, Jenkins. that's her. That is all her. <laughs> now, I know because I since Johnny's in the UK, some of your studios are in the UK that you film at, no? Um, I haven't been to the UK to film at. And oh. wait, you, you're in the UK, Johnny? I am, yeah. Oh, nice. Where, where are you? I'm in Sandwich. In Sam, wait, sandwich like, like eating? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Integrate. Serious. It's called sandwich. Yeah, it is. That's where, where sandwiches, sandwiches came from. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Are you serious wow, about that, that part, John? I did I mean, not know that fun fact. Is that a real fun fact? That's, that's where the that's sandwich where the, was invented. That's where the name came. That's from. Oh, that's the, the spot, then, man. The, it was a guy called. It was the guy called the Earl of Sandwich. Serious. Of course, Credited he was. With, with calling sandwiches sandwiches. Wow, that is awesome. <laughs> he was a ga- he was a he was like a hardcore like uh gambler, like poker player. Okay. Like, and um he wanted something that he could eat while he was playing cards. And they think he he traveled in the Middle East and he'd had sort of, you know, meat wrapped in bread. Okay. And um, it became known in social circles, in the sort of aristocratic circles, as a sandwich. And, and it just awesome. kind of spread from, from there. He was on that new shit with some bread. And <laughs> he was on that new joint, baby. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, people have been doing it forever, right? But he, he ended up taking the credit. 
never thought where you know a sandwich came from and and when he said it i'm like wait a minute yeah i hear it and i'm like let me let me get this correct and and, and <laughs> like, like eating sandwich he's like yeah it's it's, it's okay, that's it cool. yeah. it's a tiny little medieval town ah how many people what's the population uh about five thousand. Oh, okay nice that's a concert man that is a concert. It's a small concert. It's a small concert too. Yeah, that's cool. yeah, yeah, a small concert. That's a very is small like, concert. It's, it's, it's called a town, but it's more like a village, really. I'm just going to give you a little history lesson. Sandwich, uh, going back about 500 years, was the second most important port in in England after London. But it the where the harbour was, it all silted up, and in the end, it's a tiny little river. So it never developed into a modern day port, and it's just okay. as this tiny little medieval town. It's all like old timber buildings, and it's a beautiful little place. It's like something from a Dickens thing. Seriously, like in my brain, if somebody robs somewhere, I'm like, I guess we get the fire and you know <laughs> torches and go get them, or, or do we have like a police yeah. force? Like, what yeah. do we do here? <laughs> yeah, we still burn witches at the weekend. Yeah, he's just. <laughs> uh, uh, is there a lot of trees around the village? Uh, yeah, there's some trees. Yeah, and the funny thing, you're like this, precious. You're gonna like this. There's a there's another little village nearby called Ham. Serious ham sandwich. Serious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even joking. There's a road it's my sign. vacation spot. <laughs> there is a road sign that says Ham three miles, sandwich one and a half miles. It says it's ham wow. Ham sign. Yeah, man. God, a what a good little so history lesson. I'm, I'm really looking at, you know, what he's <laughs> describing looks like something that you would have inside of Van Helsing and just have a vampire or a yeah, werewolf yeah. snatch you and Oh, totally. To Pretty much. Oh, totally, yeah. bro. Yeah, Johnny's got to stay on the path when he walks at night. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you're trying to yeah. get a werewolf situation going on. Oh, dude, trust me. I will not be walking at night because I would be. It, it's a rule in horror movies. I'm the first to go. So I'm yeah. staying and I'll be like, y'all have fun. Yeah. Or you, you, we have the stunt man go in front of me because I'm like, he's yeah. good at ju- he's good at martial arts, fighting yeah, people. You have, you have to bring Precious with you. You'll be Steve stunt, stunt double. double. <laughs> there we go. There we go. The, the, yeah, the, again, I am not afraid to tell someone I'm not going to do that. that. You know what? You did say that. You did say that. Now, uh, the biz, I did not, I thought in my brain, like, I was like, oh, what the MCU does is when they hire people, they send private jets for everybody and then no. bring them in. And you're like, no, no, no. I just drive to Georgia. I'm like, oh, that makes yeah. sense. That makes no, way more to- logical sense. You have to be um, core. You have to be part of the core team to be flown in. So when you are part of the core team, they fly you in. They put you up in a hotel and stuff like that. And they take care of everything. If you're just one of the random guys, um, core team, they'll fly in from the UK. They'll fly in from Cali. They'll fly in from anywhere. But after they have their core, everything else for the tax incentive Oh. Uh, they bring in locals so oh, that's need- generally what it is and if you're local it's just like yeah you're just going to get out of your house and drive five or ten miles and then go to work yeah quick little um, unfortunately my house that was five or ten miles away from work i walked away from during yeah. the pandemic because it. nobody knew what was going to happen mm-hmm. i mean i'm still a local to to atlanta i just walked away from my my home there that's understandable. I lived in Alpharetta for a year. <laughs> okay. Sure did. I loved it. It was so green. It was it is. so green. But the pollen, I'm telling you, the pollen is killing me. I didn't have allergies until I moved to Georgia in 2014. I thought you were going to say move to the Central Valley because normally no. this is where they get it. Really? No. I mean, the the you lived in Alpharetta, so you know that there's trees in Georgia that – um are not indigenous. Yes. So they, they brought trees in. And the mm-hmm. problem with that is the trees pollinate all year round. So like oh. this group of trees will pollinate in the winter, this in the spring, this in the summer, this in the fall. So that's why the pollen rate is so high. Oh. Georgia. Yeah. Oh. So you were sneezing during, all over the place. Dude, during the spring, I mean, you, you, you're from Alpharetta, so you know yeah. all the pollen that's all over the floor. Oh, yeah, for sure. Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> and it, it's, it's just, excuse me for saying, but it's just all this tree cum. It's just yeah. all over the place. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's all over the place. It's horrible. <laughs> It's, it's horrible. We have such a good guest. So, I love it. So here, here, you don't even, you barely even sneeze out here. You're like, I'm fine. There's a title for the episode. It's it's the <laughs> dust here that gets me. The dust. Oh, like, and Madeira. That's yeah. true, bro. Yeah. I still think you're in a nice. I love Avenue 12. Well, it's it's awesome because they've got the the speed rail that's back into construction again. It is. So yes, it they're is. they're building homes like like all over the place out here, you know, to where, uh, when, when we got this house two years ago, um, homes that some of the other homes we were looking at were like, you know, $300,000. Now they're at like $750,000 in that community. And I'm, wow. It's insane. It is. Cr- mm. Yeah. The, the price of houses are just like, which is, which is why I think a lot of people are going to be in your area. You're going to see it exploding. It's going to yes. be exploding, dude. It's going to yeah. be exploding. Now, when you, uh, how long does it take to drive from Fresno to Atlanta? Uh, two days. You know what? Actually, That's not as bad as I thought it was. No. And, and like, um, I literally had to come back for my daughter's sweet 16. Uh huh. And um, I got here in a day and a half. I just pounded like 12 Red Bulls and, and just Goodness. drove, yeah, just drove like mad crazy. Goodness gracious, man. So, um, as a, if I were and now, mind you, cause I'm a crazy person. If I were a stunt man like yourself, I would never leave a movie without looking at the credits. Be like, hold on, wait it's till coming. my name It's coming. Everybody, <laughs> nobody leave this theater until my name we, comes up. We used to do that. And I used to do that a lot in, in the beginning of my career. I used to do that. Um, at now I don't, care about my name being in the credits i just care about the check being right oh you listen you know what yeah there There we go go. that's what i'm talking about it doesn't hurt though that the mcu movies they always have those end credit scenes so they're gonna sit and stay anyway right yeah and that's that's one of the things like we we sit back and we watch okay what's what's the little the teaser for you know the next uh um what what is the guy oh i can't think of his name dr dr strange Strange. dr strange yeah yeah so we, we have to look for all of that that is so freaking amazing. Like, and it's so dope that you're over, you're, you're over that whole thing. I don't know if I'd ever, you're so used to seeing your name in, in the theater that you're like, whatever. As long as they sign the check. I get stoked okay. when I see myself here. I, you know. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm like, cra- yeah, like look what? at me. And you're like, whatever. <laughs> hey, next question. I'm like, you're like, no, have I, mean, you I, s- I used to, I used to, to do it all the time. And then it's like, it's funny. It doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter what show I'm on, what movie I'm on. The one thing that comes up that will turn any will turn any grown man into a child and a fanboy. The fact that I mentioned the Power Rangers and Beetleborgs, and they're just like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that is so it's awesome. Just, it's it's so. I mean. My name it being in the credits is not going to top, you know, Power Rangers and Beetleborgs. So I mean, really, it, it, it I've got directors that used to watch me on TV, and they're like, "Are you kidding me? Oh like this God. is you? Show me a picture." Oh you know, my it's, gosh! It's, Power Rangers is huge, Steve. I don't know. If yeah, you, I don't know. I did Maj, not know this. Maj didn't watch any Power Rangers. No, my son did anything not. like that. Uh uh-uh. Yeah, because my Why son not? Ben. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I think he was so bu- he was so busy watching. What did he? What was his thing? You Thomas he the w- Tank Engine guy, huh? No, he was playing PS3, PS2. He was playing video games. Okay. Ah, okay. Yeah. So no, so, he was playing. Let me, let me ask you this: How old is your son now? Twenty-one. And how many in between then and now? How many windows did you have to repair from him throwing rocks and breaking neighbors' windows? Oh, never, nothing, ever. He was always in the. Maj is the gentlest. Yeah, gentlest he's too guy. gentle. If it, you don't have a good childhood unless you've broken a couple of windows. Oh, that's me. Me, my mom used to go, yeah. oh, for sure, because we I played football and basketball. We were breaking <laughs> so everything. Breaking all the time. <laughs> yes. And like yourself, I was in gymnastics. So I was always like flipping down the street and yeah. they're like, oh, we yeah. got to go to the hospital. You hurt your this and you hurt your that and flipping. Off. Now I look back, I'm like, what would make me think of flipping, flipping off of that? Like well, there's space between here and the the floor. Can I do a can I do a a, a cartwheel off it? 
Yeah, it yeah. basically comes down to what your parents say don't do. It's what I get paid to do. Which that is a beautiful <laughs> quote. That is a beautiful like quote, dude. That is what your literally. Parents, oh, that is, and it's funny because no one knows. I hope you're talking to schools locally to let them know. Hey, you do know that there's an alternate, like there's a profession you can make a living doing. That, yes. I hope you're talking to people. I thank you, I Steve, because I wanted to bring that. I'm sorry, precious, but I did want to bring up something like that because I am curious if there is some institution that you can go to for this or like someone like yourself you just kind of fell into it with dumb luck you know um there is no institution here in the states now in the uk and in canada there are stunt schools oh, where well, Johnny, you, have get up on be, it. you have to be certified <laughs> uh the uh i don't I, I don't know is it called a township or whatever it is that you guys have out there i'm not sure because like we have the city and the state here so the 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 what would you call sandwich like the township or the city or what oh yeah that would be like the town then the county is like the the kind of region okay so you'd like have a county thing and then you'd have like the national is there the sort of levels okay okay so it would be somewhere there that would certify you oh that's it would cool. be you know it would be you know like there there's a school in this town or whatever and and you're you have to go there and you have to learn to become like there's levels of it over there over here in the United States. Um, people are too so happy and too oh, scarce. Yes, yes. So that makes sense. Uh, I can teach you something. I can show you how to do something. I can um, pretty much train you. I can never certify you and I can never officially train you. Ah, that's you know I mean, what I'm saying. We yeah. we work together, we train together, we practice together, things like that. But there will never in the United States there will never be a um, governing body that says, "Okay, I vouch that Dan can do this." Because right. when everybody, some of the best guys, uh, I've got friends that are like top drivers that have crashed. A uh, uh, four hundred thousand dollar Ferrari, oh, and it's like, and production's like, okay, well, let's bring out the other one or whatever. But it comes down to, yeah, you know, I said this guy and I certified this guy could do this, and now I'm on the hook for that. Oh, because, that's true. That's you know, lost money. Or if uh, <laughs> something happens and and you hurt someone else, well, I certified him to do this, so. Um, when when they want to try to sue production, production will quickly turn around and say, "Hey, no, uh, that guy right there." Oh, he served five- that oh, makes total right, sense. Right. Yeah. Well, that would be awesome if you went to different schools and was just like, "Hey, just try," because you just a lot of them don't think when they're in Madero, they're in Fresno. They're like, "There's no way I'll ever be able to do." And you could be like, "Wrong again." Look at my look at my list. Look at my track yeah. list of what I well, did. <laughs> well, I I used to be, when I lived in Orange County, I used to be a uh, member of 100 BMOC, which is 100 Black Men of Orange County. Oh, that's and true. we would, it was a mentoring program. So we would go around to the schools, high schools, uh, junior high schools, and, and even the junior colleges. And we would, you know, have assemblies and things like that and, and show people that it's not all about being a rapper. It's not mm-hmm. all about being a, uh, a basketball player, football player. There's other avenues to do it. Yes. So there, was, there were, there were lawyers that came out. There were doctors that came out. There were firefighters that came out, police officers and stuff that came out. Uh, myself, I came out and um, they would talk, you know, a lot with the doctors and the lawyers and stuff. And then when they found out that there was a stunt man on the panel, it was forget about all those guys. I just want to know how many times have you been hurt? Oh yeah, uh, have you ever been lit on fire? And, and yes. it, it, just, it just went that it just went far left because they're just so, like, oh my goodness, you can do that? How do you yes. do that? Yes. And again, like I said, I didn't know that stuntmen existed until I became one. That is, and now you could say in Madeira, they didn't know stuntmen existed until they met you. Oh, I guess well, it's a it's, thing. It, it's quite a few people here that are like that. And I, I, I just, I'm, look, I'm just me. I'm just Amanda's husband. And that's it. Miss Jenkins, man. I feel you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> you, you're saying the right things right right now. <laughs> that is yes. Now I do have a goofy question. Um, yes. Yeah. When you're on Black Panther, uh-huh. when you first saw the Wakanda Forever sign, did you say that's going to be a thing? Like that's going to be a thing. People are going to be doing. Um, or were you like, eh? Looks interesting. No, I didn't. I wow. didn't. I really didn't think it was going to be. Um, I did, however, when throughout all the movies and, and TV shows that I've worked on, mm-hmm. um, I can say that Black Panther is the one that I was really nervous about. Oh. And when I say that, I mean, I literally stood in line with everybody, all the other stunt performers to audition just to to walk up and sh- like and it was the guys that i had already known and trained with in la but i went through all of the steps i didn't oh, assume wow. i didn't assume that i was going to get on it uh-huh i literally i didn't have to go through all the steps come to find out i really didn't have to go through all the steps i didn't know that i wasn't okay. sure okay i just wasn't sure okay so i stakes little higher for you um for in in what sense i just mean as far as like because you know you you had mentioned earlier that you know you didn't really have like the 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 marvel fandom or whatever but in this particular case Uh you're standing in line you're auditioning for it you're putting in the work that you yeah you found out you didn't really need to do so by doing that and being in that type of an environment where you're used to just going hey you know you got the gig which i'm assuming yes does it feel like there's more involvement with it like the stakes like i really want this you know what i mean no it 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 showed it, it showed that i did want it and I found myself doing things that I didn't have to do mm. because I wanted to make sure that I got it right. because I knew just how important that movie was. Um, I, as, as I said before, no, I wasn't a Marvel fan. I was a DC freak. Wow. And it was, it was only Batman because growing up, Batman was the only character that looked like me. Mm. And when I say not Bruce Wayne, Batman, he was the only that he was the closest character to being black. Yeah. When I was growing up. So I was Mm -hmm. a Batman fan. That's real. You know, I don't care about Bruce Wayne. I don't care about his money. Yeah. Yeah. All that stuff. It was Batman, his gadgets, his cars. And I mean, look at look at how we grew up. Who, Who else started putting 20 inch rims and crazy stuff on cars like Batman was black. Like, he, like <laughs> there's no way in the world that you can tell me that he was not. You know, that's funny. I mean, so, I think I know how I'm going to start the show. That quote right there is going to be, the yeah, I'll be like, <laughs> this is going to be where this conversation goes. You know? Brace so yourself. When you, when you when you look at it, it was Black Panther was so important to me that to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, and for my son growing up and all that to finally have a superhero that he can actually, you know, bond with. It's Mm -hmm. like, hey, that's me. That looks like me. That's me being portrayed on TV. Mm -hmm. And that's that's why Black Panther was so, so important to me. And when we got on set, um, I mean, even now, this Black Panther, regardless of how everybody talks and, you know, there's certain words and certain language that it's like, y'all know we don't speak that way on set. You can speak that way off set, but on set because of who we are, where we are. Um, Wakanda ceased being theoretically theoretical yeah. or uh-huh. fictitious yep. and it became real. Wow. Wow. So wow. Wakanda is real in, in a lot of us. Um, and the more, like, I can say this in part two, we dive into the city of Wakanda. Beautiful. So you guys get to see how some of the cities and, and the inter, you know, the interworkings of the nation look. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. It, it, it becomes even more real at that particular point in time. Now, um, first of all, it's beautiful thinking that Wakanda exists somewhere. I, if I walked on set, I'd probably pass out. <laughs> like, like I don't ever want to leave. I would legitimately pass out. Um, but well, they built they built actual houses for us. Like oh. the, the town, they built the town. Like we we opened up the doors and we're walking in Come and on. there's stairs. There's stairs and we're going upstairs. And I mean, 
You're all temporarily the residing in Wakanda. That's You're living in Wakanda. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling you the all the houses are That's decorated. Beautiful. There's there's like everything is there. Everything that is there. really beautiful. I can't. I mean. And I'm wondering, since you're so you're so learned as far as the stunt, you know, the stunts go, have you thought about going into the stunt coordinator role and just saying, you know what, I'm just going to do this whole thing? Yeah, I've coordinated a few projects um, right now. I think I'm going to go back to focusing um, becoming the coordinator more now. Nice. Um, I'm my ultimate goal is to become a second unit director. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that's my <laughs> ultimate goal. So um, it, it was just at a time when I moved to Georgia and started doing everything on Marvel. It was just back to back. Yeah. And yeah. I was making more money being a stuntman mm -hmm. than I would have made being a coordinator on this show and then jumping over to this show and okay. jumping over to this show. Okay. Uh, I had worked from 2015 on Civil War all the way through uh, 2018. Just consistent. It was just back to back to back. Wow. To back. And this was you driving back and forth? No, this is me living in Georgia. Oh, you just lived there instead. Oh, because yeah, you, I that's did, right. I didn't, you didn't give up your house. That's right. Yeah, I didn't come here until everything shut down. And just didn't know what was going on. I mean, truth be told, a lot of people probably will kind of sugarcoat it. But the whole pandemic thing was it was literally it was it was a scary event. Of course. I mean, it was it was ultimately. Everything that we've seen in the movies, outbreak mm -hmm. and containment. Yeah. If you if you look if you go back and you watch the movie Containment, you know, if you watch that movie, it seems like life imitated art for at that sure. time for because sure. in the movie the CDC tells the people in the movie, well there's a virus, there's something and we don't know what it is and we can't get a hold on it mm -hmm. and we don't know what is what and we don't know how it's transmitted and we don't know the mortality rate. And then you go to real life, and that actually happened in yeah. real life. The yeah, yeah, CDC yeah. told us, we don't know what the hell's going on. We don't know what this is. We don't know how, how you know, fatal it is. or, mm -hmm. or anything. And it just literally, I, I watched Containment uh, not too long ago, like a couple days ago. It's a it mirror. Was, it's a mirror. It Yeah, it in was. Legit, except for the people in the movie. I wish the uh people on mass were at least as smart as the people walking yeah. around because they at least took it generally seriously yeah we're just yeah. like whatever i'm like man and I, yeah i remember and i remembered that homegirl caught it and passed away not, uh spoiler alert and it still shocked me i was like oh that's right she got yeah. it the doctor got, oh, totally forgot i was like oh yeah. no she yeah. got it i was like what a sad movie this is but Can I ask I, a question? I'm sorry, it. but no, on no. that note, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I, and I'm not doing it to be that guy, but are you referring <laughs> to the movie Contagion or Contagion? Contagion, yeah, there we okay, go. Okay, because I mean, it was yeah. sounding like you were, because there, there's, no, there's so I, many movies, you know what I mean? I but, did say Containment. There's, there was a, a TV show that I worked on named, called Containment that mm. was the same thing, and it's, it's but it's Contagion. Uh, yeah, so Outbreak and Contagion. Con yeah, you know. Contagion, yes. the, Yeah, and the reason that I remembered it so much is because much like a lot of people during that time when you're on lockdown and you got nothing to do and you're going crazy watching the news and whatever, as like I made that, I don't want to call it a mistake, but it kind of was when I watched it because I was not in the right mind frame to watch Contagion. <laughs> and that was some scary, scary yeah. shit, man. I yeah. love how I love how Precious was like, oh, my bad. I was thinking about a movie I was on. Yeah. yeah. No, it was a thing. No, I just, <laughs> oh, my bad. Oh, my bad. You're trying to make me that guy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Isn't that a marvel? Isn't that a marvel, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> I see you, player. <laughs> hey, look, your viewers are gonna be like, he's he's nice. He's just arrogant. <laughs> no, not even. Not even. That not is even. awesome. He's like, I'm sorry. I was thinking containment. Uh, I was on that one. There's just so I'm many. Just, I'm, <laughs> the same, I'm the same guy that walks into grocery stores and and will <laughs> see people and just pay for everything that they have. You know, it's it's. 
you're you're nice and you're humble, and it's the fact that you are nice and humble, considering the what you've done is just a mm-hmm. beautiful thing. And I Thank think you. a lot of it has to do with Miss Jenkins. I'm gonna it, go on a limb. It it is it is it does have a lot to do with her because she is my she's my center, so she yep. keeps me grounded. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are polar opposites, but she <laughs> keeps me she keeps me grounded. But it's also, um, I grew up in the ghetto. I grew up in the uh, projects. Yeah. And uh, there, were, there were times that when we grew up, there was nothing in the house to eat. Oof. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. So I see at times, I'll see people. And it's, it's the, the strangest and the most odd things because my wife would be like, you give so freely, but you see a guy standing on the corner with a sign and you really don't want to give him any money. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, I look at, the demeanor of the person. I, I yeah. can look at the person's face, the person's eyes and, mm-hmm. you know, but then there's also the guy that's, you know, on the corner and you know, when I give him this $5, he's going to go and buy a beer or go and get high. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you won't give this guy money, but you gave that guy five bucks. Yeah. And my reasoning for that is there's some demons that this guy is facing. Mm-hmm. And if he goes and buys a beer, or goes and, and gets high real quick, I'm giving him at least a little bit of peace away from those demons that he's facing. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's my um reasoning for it. You know, but I was I was just, you know, um just at work and as I was driving through I saw a uh, a Spanish guy uh, on one of the freeway off ramps and he had his wife and two kids and stuff like that, literally sitting right there. On the nice. Yeah. Um, his sign said that he had lost, uh, lost work a little bit for hotel room and, and, you know, for the, you know, uh, for the kids and stuff like that. And I, I literally pulled over and I think I had like 55 or 60 bucks in my pocket and I gave it to him. That's beautiful, beautiful, man. man. You know, I mean, you've got your if if you are if you are scamming me, then that's something that you have to deal with with God. Exactly. Yeah, karmically, that's going to come back at you at some point for sure. You've got you've got your kids literally sitting outside in the blistering heat. Like, I don't think any parent should be that cruel if they're trying to run a scam. No, and it also, uh, you know, when you have a, a small one yourself and you see that, it's just like, oh, my oh, God, I couldn't imagine. Yeah. It's heartbreaking, yeah. man, you know, and- yeah. because we don't know what's going on. I mean, there's there's people during the pandemic that didn't go to work and that that haven't paid their mortgage or their mm-hmm. rent that are just still not at work. Yeah. yeah. Two years. Like, change people change, that are, man. Yeah. Like, I mean, like right now, there's a shortage on baby formula worldwide. That's crazy. So. That is just insane. It is crazy. And it is funny because everyone's like, well, you know, uh, just get a job. And I'm like, there are people that were gainfully employed two years ago. Yeah. And all it took was four months of without a check. And now everything has changed. They yeah. were just gainfully employed. So they weren't lazy. It's just who would have seen a pandemic coming? And there's people that do not trust the system. That- yeah. That literally they they gave everybody an out and they said, okay, hey, look, if you have any deeply religious beliefs, not your religion is against it, but you have a religious yes. belief yes. against it. Uh huh. That is the key point. People that have a religious belief against it that don't want to get the vaccine, they were like, okay, well, forget your religious belief. It, it's it's going to happen or you're going to, you know, starve. Yeah, 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 for sure. And it's it's a tough, like, I don't think we're going to, well, I hope we don't run into anything like this again in our lifetime, but the way things are going, I don't know. I just don't know. It might happen again. <laughs> I don't, at this point, surprises are coming just in. Just redo day. your garage. Uh huh. Yeah, just, just redo your garage, put cabinets up there, and just put things that aren't going to perish. You ain't lying, garage. huh? You ain't even you lying. Know? I mean, when the, 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 the fact that I hung out with a lot of, weird guys that made me kind of like a a low-key prepper yeah um <laughs> saved saved me on a lot of stuff yeah yeah <laughs> it saved me on a lot of things i was it, like yo i was prepared his brother got a covered i was like hey where does this what is this uh stairs that go underneath your pool where does this like, don't worry about that <laughs> where does this go we don't talk 
don't about worry that. about it. <laughs> We're gonna talk about that today. No way. While, while you're while you're up here playing, I literally tried to buy a shipping container to put. If you don't in the stop. Backyard. No, in the backyard. The problem with it is California has earthquakes and shifting like that. That's not something to do inside of California. No, the problem with it is why are you buying a shipping container, bruh? Because that's the problem. No, I can buy a shipping container, a 40 foot shipping container for like 1500 bucks and just dig it into the ground. Bruh, I'd have to visit you. I'd be like, listen, man. I'd be like, listen, man. <laughs> we got to have a talk. You're doing way, way too much. <laughs> this is for your own good, bro. Hey, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Look, right now, we have a crazy uh, uh, vaccine that a lot of people don't trust and we really don't know. Uh-huh. So, hey, look, I'm looking at I Am Legend and Resident <laughs> Evil to pop off. <laughs> well, you know what? Here's the thing. I will say I would trust you to fight. Like, hey, I gotta go. I gotta go see Precious because Duke can fight for real. You know I was like, Duke can fight for real. I bet he has a sword up in that mug for sure. Oh, I, I got some of everything, but my whole thing is this: everybody that has everybody that knows me is like, yo, when the shit hits the fan, we come into your house. Oh, for I sure, said, dude. I'm gonna tell you right now: if there, if there's no communication. Anything coming on the horizon, I'm popping off. So you better you better be real good to sneak up to my house and be like, hey, P, don't shoot me. It's me. It's oh, me. don't trip. I would just go to Avenue 12 and be like, hey, where's the black dude that lives around here? I'm like, oh, right over there. Like, right over there. Right over there. Hey, that dude over there. One, two. There's only three of us in exactly. my Exactly. So I got a one out of three. Only three. Yeah, you're in the ranch shows, G. There's only a few. I think and I would just be all like, all right, let's narrow it down where's the shipping container in the backyard like oh that's oh, they, dude. Would, like, they wouldn't even know they it, it would be buried like you oh said, the, stairs, the stairs that go under the pool <laughs> if you don't they'd be like we buried a shipping container they'd be like oh that brother got bodies for sure what's happening what's happening over there oh man this was an awesome combo <laughs> yeah man I want to be no, that guy real quick. I, I'm sorry, but I, I do. I don't. I know Precious has uh, uh, almost a precious amount of time. Can you believe that? I didn't even mean it that way. But <laughs> I know you have a limited amount of time, man. And I, oh, I do want to kind of. I'm I'm good. When you when you called me, like I said, I was uh, double checking with everything, and I was in Lowe's getting another uh, dealing stuff with the getting picking up another refrigerator. Um, they don't close for a while. I can always go back and pick it up. Oh, nice. Oh, good. Okay. Well, the other reason is is that we got our boy Johnny. That's nine hours. Ahead of us. Mm -hmm. and, well, I just want to make sure because I know that uh, John's kids were excited about us talking to an mm -hmm. MCU stuntman today. So okay. are there questions that you had? I have got a few questions. Uh, where are the kids? Yeah. Uh, well, my daughter's in bed now. <laughs> um, my son, uh, he's uh, at his mom's. Okay. So, uh, he's Well, my son's kind of grown up with the MCU stuff. He's 19 now. Okay. Well, uh, what is what does he want to know that that uh, I can either excite him with or or, or bust his him. bubble and say I can't say it. <laughs> well, his first question was, "What's the hardest hit you've ever taken doing a stunt?" Oh, Jesus Christ! Um, that's going to be on Infinity War. Uh, no, that's going to be on Endgame, and I was playing a. Uh, uh, a night creature type character where uh, Drax had the gauntlet. Mm -hmm. Right. So as Drax is running with the gauntlet, I'm supposed to do a, a move called a dead man, which they put a harness on us and they yeah. put a, uh, a line and they anchor the line to the ground. Right. So you run as fast as you can. Yeah. To the end of the line when the line pulls taut you're like it you hit the ground Oosh. well i never got that's not the problem i never got to the end of the line for some reason okay um drax decided well if we we're here and i'm running to him drax he was supposed to just run and throw his arm up on a straight line mm -hmm. right but Dave didn't do that. Dave Batista kind of, you know, bowed out towards me. Oof. And 
as he's running and I'm running, he bowed out towards me and this man hit me. Bam. Whoa. When I tell you this dude knocked the shit out of me, <laughs> I'm not playing. <laughs> this man hit me and and like he hit me and I hit the ground. And after the take was over, I looked over at the other stunt guys that were right there. And I noticed my line wasn't taut. I still Ooh, had a lot of slack in my line. Yeah, right, right, and right. I'm like, I was like, what the hell? And then I looked down and some of his, you know, like the little webbing. Yeah. Stuff, it was right, on, right. it was on my chest. <laughs> so I was like, okay, um, let's do that again. Maybe I did something wrong. And then, so we did it a second time. And, you know, cause Drax was like, oh, well he came in too far. So me and the other stunt guys, we were like, and I'm sorry if Dave Batista hears this or somebody puts it on. <laughs> sorry, brother, to throw you under the bus. <laughs> I am so sorry to throw you under the bus, but I'm gonna tell you right now, there's no way that I could come in too far when I'm on an anchored line. That's yeah. true. So, yeah. so they shortened, you know, he's the actor, but the actor's always right. Mm-hmm. So oh, they shortened, they shortened my line, and they they brought me back like another two feet. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, Dave, he, he's not going to go in that far again. So we're running. We do it again, and I take off, haul assing, full speed. Bam, I get hit again. Now, mind you, I'm two feet back. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. he came in an arch, you know, a bigger arch, and mm-hmm. he hit me. Right. Wham! <laughs> when I tell you we did that a third time, and then it was just over with and done, the next day, when I tell you that my entire side, my neck, oh my, my chest gosh. was bruised, oh, damn, when I wow. say swollen, right. and that's just man lifting his arm up like this. Goodness, so when he's I, a solid when I, dude. When I tell you that um, my my hat is off to the wrestlers that had to literally, <laughs> you know, they, right, they, they, right, they, right. they throw him up against yeah. the rope and then well, go yeah, back yeah. and do the little shoulder check. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. No, no. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now, I have done car hits, but I got the snot knocked out of me from Dave Batista. Wow. Dave Batista is stronger than a car, is what you're saying. He, man, <laughs> I'll tell you right now, that guy has knocked me down God here. Great. Silly. Wow. <laughs> you had the shit knocked out of you by the best, it seems. That's man, but yeah, it, it was fun, but it was just still like, you know, on the day, I can talk about it now, but on the day, you know, you've got a leading actor saying, oh, it's your fault. You're coming in too far. So directors yeah. don't know what's going on. That's right, true. Right. Get, get your guy. Get his shit together. And, you That's know, true. Yeah, you're right. It's like, right. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's not me. I'm sorry. No, you're right. You're right. <laughs> but, yeah, that was the hardest hit. <laughs> Good question. Yeah. Okay. What, 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 what's, he asked, um, what's your proudest moment? What what stunt was like the one you're most proud of? My proudest moment would have been uh, in 2009. I was working on Expendables, and uh, I was standing next to Sylvester Stallone. So he's talking to me about stunts and about fighting and stuff like that. And he literally turns to me, you know, because we start talking about Rocky. And uh, he's like, yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, the, the hardest thing Jeez. was learning how to do the dislocating with the shoulder when I'm punching. And he's literally punching me in the stomach as he's talking. Oh, and I'm, come and on. I'm, I'm sitting here literally trying to be as professional as, as, professional as possible. Oh my God. And in my mind, I'm geeking out because I'm literally getting punched by Rocky. By fucking Rocky. Oh, he's, oh my God. He's literally oh God. throwing short hooks. And he's like, yeah. And I can't do his voice. But yeah, you know, and it's just the hardest and it was that was that's crazy one yeah, of the is, best you gotta, experiences. Lean, you gotta lean I, into it when you're punching people yeah there, there we it go is. there it is was, that was one of the best moments i've ever had in the film industry is is Dude, literally getting amazing. punched by that's, rocky does your daughter have a few <laughs> questions bro yeah yeah but i don't think you're gonna be able to answer this one no 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 come on man Let's well i'll tell you this if we can if if uh, if Dan is good, we can answer. Wh- uh, however, until Dan says up, oh, we gotta go. And then if you want to email me any other questions, I mean, it's it's awesome. That's dope. Cool. You're the best, man. Amazing, amazing. But uh, I I said I don't think he's gonna be able to answer this one on a professional basis. Oh, oh, oh it's one of the good what? ones. Oh, <laughs> the juicy questions. 
Who is the most difficult person that you've worked with? Oh! <laughs> no, I can answer that oh. flat out. Oh. Flat out. <laughs> Michael Bay. Michael, Michael Bay? Bay? Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's flat out. One of the most difficult people I've ever worked with was Michael Bay. It's, it's a thing to where, regardless of what we do, I'm still a grown man, and you're a grown man, and there's certain ways that you're not going to talk to me. Gotcha. Mm. Oh, fast. Nice. Um, I, I will I'll walk away from the job, but I guarantee you, the first person to take a swing at Michael Bay is going to get hired by everybody in the world so much more <laughs> because they're going to be like, how did it feel to hit Michael Bay? <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> but like literally, he, he literally just walked up. There was a scene that we were doing in Transformers and there was supposed to be some explosions and stuff. And um, we were supposed to get a cue from uh, special effects. Um, so special effects was supposed to set off an explosion behind us, which made us dive and, and do all of the kind of stuff. And yes. there's all the CGI and the, you know, the, the fake transformers are all there. And um, myself and uh, some of the other guys are running and the mark where we were supposed to explode and dive out, we passed it, you know, SFX didn't hit the button. So we just, we didn't fall down and we didn't dive out. We were just like, okay, well, maybe they might be late. We just kept mm -hmm. running. And then, you know, he yells cut. And, uh, like, literally, Bay gets this close to my face. And he's like, you fucked me. Excuse the language. No, 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 no. Like, He's like, you fucked me. You fucked me on that shot. You know, $100,000 shot. And I'm like, my eyes are big. And I look over at the stunt coordinator, which was Ken Bates. And I look over at him. And Kenny's like, don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. So I'm like, okay. So he's yelling at me, yelling at me. Wow. And he's the only person I've ever seen shut Michael Bay down. You know, right. he's just like, Bay, shut the fuck up. Let me talk to my guys. And he just, he stopped. Wow. Like, him, and, him and Michael Bay are really good friends. Oh, so he okay. Can, he can talk to him like that. So like Ken, Kenny Bates, like literally shut him down. and was like, don't, don't worry about it. Just, just go over there, go over there. And, you know, took care of it. But I'm like, dude, like just... Out of nowhere. I mean, you're, yeah, you're wow. direct, but I don't know you. And you don't know me. Yeah, we ain't like that. We ain't cool like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, sure. Wow, that's amazing. So that was that was the most difficult person to work with. Well, thanks for my my daughter Emily. Thanks you for that. No worries. Uh, no worries. Give him one more, Johnny. Okay, one more. One more. Okay. Uh, what's what's the scariest stunt you've ever done? Where you were like, oh man. And did it have to do with a boat and a spear? <laughs> no, it didn't have to do anything with the boat and the spear. Um, I was working on a show called Lie to Me. Hey, with Roth, Tim Roth. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I love that show. And in, in the scene, there was a kid on the rooftop that had like a camera or something inside of his hand. Uh, cops were looking for another guy. And, then, and this is a show that I actually doubled two people on. Okay. So cops were looking for another guy that was shooting at them and all that stuff that ran into the building. So this cop literally busts out of the, the door onto the roof of the building and within like two seconds sees the kid, pow, 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 shoots him, right? So my stunt was I had to do a backfall off of a, it was a five-story building. So it was a 50-foot fall uh, onto an airbag at night in a uh, like the airbag was in a parking lot of this apartment complex uh what made it scary was i was going backwards at night for the first oh time ever God. i had never practiced at night so it was backwards at night and the wrought iron fencing kind of bent in Ooh. towards the airbag oh, so as i fell i fell in that direction so oh, that wow. that wow. was that was the scariest thing that I've ever had to do. Jeez. Wow. You're man. an interesting cat, man. Seriously. You got some good stories. <laughs> oh, oh you, you didn't get that from the underground container that he was an interesting <laughs> cat right there. You didn't get that. <laughs> you didn't see I was throwing up them quote fingers up. You didn't, like, you didn't pick that up. <laughs> you are you are literally making me rethink that because there are ways 
there are ways to do it, but I mean, it, it's California is just too shaky, man. It, it's Bruh. I would hate to be down there and just be like, oh God, bro. Listen, I would probably get text. <laughs> I'd get text from the few people I know would be like, did you hear about this brother burying a shipping container out right here? I'll be like, I bet you I know who it is, man. <laughs> I just talked to that brother yesterday. <laughs> That would be that would be my man cave, you know, uh-huh. because it, you go. it's myself, my wife, my two daughters, and uh, my nineteen month old son. So he doesn't count. I'm inside the house with three women. Yeah, help me. Yeah, no, you know what? Now the ship, now the shipping container. Now if you do it like that, okay. okay. But this brother okay. was acting like you're gonna have a lamp in there with like. Uh, green giant containers everywhere. I'm like, oh come on, bro. Oh no. What no, are, no. what are we it's doing? A whole wall of carrots. He <laughs> 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 said a wall of carrots. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Yeah. Man, I'm going to ask one all more right. question, and I and I honestly, I could just ask questions all day long to you. You're you're a fantastic interview, and thank you so much for coming on. Thank and you, I'm, sir. Thank I want to ask this one only because uh, this was something that I was planning on asking earlier, and I'm okay. curious that as a stuntman, as a professional stuntman, what are your feelings towards actors? Let's just say Tom Cruise, Keanu Reeves, that do their own stunts. Um, my feelings toward actors that do their own stunts. Uh, Keanu is a great guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I've met him on a number of occasions when I've gone down to 8711. Um, he's very good friends with the guy that that um, runs 8711. Uh, his name is Chad Stahelski. So, um, and these I'm, I'm giving their names to you guys. Oh, for sure, for sure. Can actually look these people up. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, but uh, Keanu is great. I love being able to see an actor the way that I thought they always should be when I was growing up as a mm-hmm. kid. Yes. You know, remember, I doing uh, martial arts and stuff, I thought, you know, everybody in the world that did this on TV were just that badass. Mm-hmm. So um, I love the fact that actors do their stunts. Um, I love the fact even more when an actor actually trains and can do it and look just as good, if not better than his stunt double. Yeah. Which in Keanu's um, category, he's phenomenal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tom Cruise is phenomenal on certain things. Like the guy will fly his planes, helicopters, race his cars, ride his motorcycles. Not so good with the fighting. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, he, he's just great. Um, and, and the fact that, like, Keanu gives his stuntmen credit. Oh wow! You know he'll always say, "I've had a great stunt team." This, that, even though Tom Cruise has four different stunt doubles, he will tell people that he does not. Ah! And he makes people sign contracts to say that he does all of his stuff when he does not. Okay, that is that is the aspect. (laughs) (laughs) That is the aspect that I do not like. Okay. Um. Mm. It is our job to make you look good. Mm -hmm. It is our job to do things and you get all the credit and all the glory. We may make $200,000. You're going to make $25 million. Mm -hmm. So if there is a, an award that is given for stunts, let the stunt man have that award. That's dope. That's dope. They got $200,000 and an award. You've got $20 million and everybody in the world being your fan. That's real. You know, mm-hmm. let us have ours. Yeah, That's I dope. like that. I like that. Uh, last answer. question. I have one more. Okay. Uh, listening to this, every upstart, every person that has a dream of being a stuntman, where would you, what would you tell them to start? And what do you think the steps should be for them? Where do they start and where should they go? Just keep on moving. Most kids have already started. Mm. Um, so jumping fences, um, uh, climbing onto the roof, jumping off of the roof, everything that your mom says don't do, mm-hmm. that's already a start. Uh, for kids inside of Los Angeles, I would say go to a gym called JAM, J-A-M. Okay. It's called Joining All Movement. Okay. There you've got people doing uh, fighting. You've got people doing um, uh, uh, tricking. Mm-hmm. Um, 
or you can go to Tempest, which is a free running academy. Oh, nice. That, you know, so uh, you can, there's Tempest and Southgate, Southgate. There's like three or four different Tempest studios that they can go to for free running. Okay. So all of that stuff is going to um, add up into what you have to do, especially if you're into tricking. That's gymnastics, martial arts all combined. Okay. And some of the top stunt people, uh, Anish Cherfa right now is a world champion tricker. Okay. You know, and he's, he's like a god in stunts right now. So okay. some of the top people are doing these things. Okay. That's, that's where you want to start. That is beautiful. All right, young gentlemen, you heard that, kids out there. Go chase your dream and do not think it's impossible. Just don't think that. You heard our brother Precious right now telling you, you can do it. From the ghetto to a stuntman, you could do it. Go do it. Chase your dream. Absolutely. Yep. Well, right. Precious, let me tell you what, man. This has been like way better than I, I – it's not that I wasn't expecting great, but this is just so much fun. <laughs> no, seriously, this is just so much fun. We got Mrs. Jenkins involved. We met you know the what kid. Man? Cairo. We saw the props. Yeah, she won't, she won't get on, on screen. You know? Oh, you <laughs> can't say goodbye, no, Miss Jenkins. Usually, usually, like, I'll be on set and I'll just, like, she'll say, you know, I, there's an actor that I like or yada, 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 and I'll, I'll go over and I'll talk to him like, hey – Say hi to my wife, and I'll just call her FaceTime. Oh, come and, on. And she's like, you could have waited until I had my hair done. <laughs> of or, course. Or I could have told like you that, bro. Until, oh. I, until I had something better or whatever. So, like, she won't. But here, here she comes here. Hey! hey what's hey, going on, Miss Jenkins? This is, this is my wife. You know, oh, look at this amazing cup. Oh, oh, come oh, on. You guys are adorable. You got to stop it now. <laughs> look at them. Beautiful. <laughs> wonderful. This is this is my anchor here. This that is, is this beautiful. Is the one that keeps me from floating off. That is a beautiful couple oh, right you. there. Thank oh, you, boy. thank you, Precious. Again, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I don't know, do you get a chance to actually, be, you know, since you're in the movie so much, do you get a chance to actually enjoy the movies? Um, yeah. no. All right. Really? Okay. Yeah, that's right. fair. Yeah. Well, I still um, want to. Ex- I want to throw I, this out real quick to you. Go ahead. I'm I sorry. Enjoy, please. I enjoy movies that I didn't work on. Okay. Okay. If if I've worked on the movie. I'm watching the movie because I know the scene and I know what's going, what's going to happen. Uh, right. And I'm, mm-hmm. I'm critiquing it and I'm looking for stuff. Okay. Right? And, and it, and it sucks. But if it's a movie that the only movies that I really enjoy are, and it's sad to say, which would be the, the, the Chinese films, you know, Jackie's films and stuff like yeah. that. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm, stuff. I'm on the edge of my seat. I'm with you. That's, you know, yeah. I enjoy scary movies because I'm a scary little punk and I'm just not going to work on it. I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> well, we definitely have our share of uh, reviews with like, you know, scary movies, all kinds of stuff like that. And the reason that I asked you that question is because we do have to wrap this up. I would like to extend an invitation for you to come on back sometime and we can just continue this conversation. Cause I, I've had sure, any time, brother, any, any time you want, just, uh, you know, bang my line. I'll be on there with you. For sure, for sure. All right. Yeah, we'll handle that for sure, man. Thank you so much, Precious, for joining us. John, thanks for joining us, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Precious. I'm John, kind of I'm going to go buy a sandwich. I swear. Yay! I'm going to buy a sandwich right now. I'm, I'm going to take a picture of me eating the sandwich in honor of you and your town. There I'm we go. Dan, send him the picture of me eating a sandwich. <laughs> we want to have John send a picture of him eating a sandwich in sandwich to you so you can enjoy that. Oh, yes, wait sandwich. a minute. Stand by oh, really? the sign. Stand by the, the sign. Ham sandwich. Line. I'll ham send sandwich. It. Eating a ham sandwich. Yes. Sir. There we go. I'll, I'll send it to you, All right, man. ladies and gentlemen, you have heard a uh, you've heard a very fun interview, in my opinion. I just really can't thank Precious Jenkins for coming on enough. Again, man, it's been a pleasure talking to you. It was nice meeting you thank originally. Thank you, guys. And that's why you know we had you here. So... Ladies and gentlemen, that's how you do it right there. That's how you take a career and you just build it from the ground up and you come out happy. Look at the smile on this guy right here, man. He's got a <laughs> beautiful wife, beautiful family. The man is yes. successful. That's how you do it right there. Hopefully you have taken Thank notes. You. All Thank right. you very much, guys. I appreciate your time. Good yeah, show. I appreciate your time too, man. Thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up then, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, again, Precious Jenkins. And Oh, by the way, is there where can people uh, you know reach out to you or what do you got going on? Anything you want to promote before you go? Um, I don't have anything promoting um i just do me um i'm if you look up like there's there's only one black stunt man in the world named precious 
So if you look for Precious, you'll find them. I mean, I'm on social media, just regular Precious Jenkins on social media. Um, and that's just it. There it is. All right, sir. Well, you know, thanks again. I'm, I'm, I'm not hard to find and, and very easy to talk to. You certainly are. That's that, way easier than I would I, like. This has been so much fun. I'm sorry, but I do have to get out of here, guys. And I'm sorry. It's a medical appointment. It's like old guy shit that I have to do. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It just happens. We're okay. on our 40s. We know what's up. So with that, thank you very much, sir. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. And I, I have a feeling that you're going to hear Precious back on the show real soon. So with that, awesome class, guys. yes, people be good to yourselves. Be good to the people around you. Peace. Peace. <laughs>